1971 obtained her first Weimaraner as a shooting companion. She then has made up both show champions, full champions, and also a field trial champion. In 1981, she won the Gundog Group with what was then the first male Weimaraner. She first awarded Kennel Cup certificates in the early 1980s with the Weimaraner and is now approved to award CCs in 14 breeds across the Gundog Group. She judged the Gundog Group seven times since that first occasion in 2001. Indeed, she has the distinction of being the only Kennel Club A panel judge for field trials who's also a Gundog Group judge. Ladies and gentlemen, Please give a warm welcome to Mrs. Di Arrowsmith. So you join us now in the big ring for the Gundog Group, tonight's only group. And coming into the ring is our judge, Di Arrowsmith. Waiting for her best of breed Gundog winners. Joining me for commentary is Frank Kane. All the import registers are being judged. And we're going to see the imported register first of all, do a lap of honour. So the imported register breeds, of course, they haven't quite got enough numbers or enough bloodlines in the country yet to be on the breed register, but they're breeds that have enthusiasts who are starting to breed them in this country. This is a wirehead pointing griffin. Jitan. So, so gun dog with some hound influence and the, the wiry coat and long head for retrieving an all-purpose gun dog. It can hunt, it can point, and it can retrieve. And now we're going to see our best of breeds from the gun dog group coming in, 31 of them. And the first of them is the glorious Bracco Italiano. Here comes the brisk stride of the Brittany. The lovely lines of the English setter. The German long head pointer, a solid liver in colour. And one of the most popular of our gun dog workers, the German short head pointer. And here's the German wire. The Gordon Setter, same dog we saw winning the Vulnerable Breeds competition, was best of breed across today. And the Hungarian Vizsla and the Hungarian Wirehead Vizsla following close on his heels. The Irish Red and White Setter coming in now. And the Irish Setter. One of, one of my favourite breeds, this, the Italian Spinoni. And here's the Legotta Romagnolo. The large Munsterlander. The pointer. Here's the pointer. And the first of the retrievers, this is the Chesapeake Bay Retriever. The curly coat, the tallest of the retriever breeds. The ever popular flat coated retriever. And the Golden Retriever, defeating over 500 others today. The Labrador Retriever, this a yellow. And he's the Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retriever, the longest named dog in the group. <laughs> the first of the Spaniels now, the American Cocker Spaniel. And the Clumber Spaniel. The little Merry Cocker Spaniel. The English Springer. The Field Spaniel. The Irish Water coming in next. We've just seen that one too. And the little Sussex Spaniel. There's the Welsh Springer. The Spanish Water Dog. And then the last in the group, the Weimarana. Thank you, 
So Di Arrowsmith going to take a look at her best of breed winners. First chance she gets to walk down the line and see what's good. First walk down the line, taking in the outline and balance of the breeds. Usually the first indication of good breed type, if they're the right size, right proportions. And actually coming in this evening, there look to be some nice ones. A very good group, it looks. And uh, here's a lady, our judge is experienced both with show dogs and in, with her field trial dogs. So she, she knows a fit for function dog. Looking at the pointer and the first of the retrievers there, the Chesapeake Bay and the curly coat. The happy wagging tail of the flat coat. And on to the Spaniels. I think Di's got her serious face on there. <laughs> Full of concentration as she at uh, She'll need it all in this. It's a huge group. responsibility, I'm sure, judging a group at Crufts. You should know, Frank. And I'll know tomorrow again, too, yes. So here is the first of our Gundog Best of Breed winners. This is the Bracco Italiano, stems from the old practice of mating hounds with gun dogs in order pr to produce a type of pointing dog that had plenty of stamina, plenty of substance, and could go all day in the field. A real shooter's right hand. This is relatively new to championship status in the United Kingdom, but it's caught on largely for its wonderful head and expression and its supple athletic gait. They're usually very eye-catching on the move. Clean athletic stride, a supple skin which is uh, protective when working, the divergent head planes in the breed, very athletic and really stretching out there and covering the ground. And Eva is the first champion in the UK. She's three years old and belongs to Lynn Bowley, who's showing her in the ring this evening. The Bracco Italiano. And here's the Brittany. This is a French breed. At one time, they were known as the Brittany Spaniel, but since they've proved their worth as an all-purpose gun dog, they can hunt and flush out the game. Wonderful scenting powers to scent gain. So they're all round hunt, point, and retrieve. Brisk and athletic. The first club was formed in 1908. Frank's being very modest here. He judged these breeds at Crufts today, so this is his best of breed winner. What did you like especially about this one, Well, Frank? it's got all the breed essentials. It's cobby, which means it's short and compact, square in the body, big ribs, and a good length of leg. They're not over heavy in bone, and this lovely brisk stride, and this straight top line. The little Brittany. The flowing lines of the English setter, one of the most glamorous in the gun dog group, and this a blue Belton. Belton is what they call, the aficionados call all those gorgeous flecks all over the coat. A long, graceful neck, a deep body, a powerful hunting dog, this. This is the top winner in the breed for last year and comes from a famous kennel, Rusheka. It's called Rusheka Shades of Grey. Um, beautifully, he's a tricolour. He's blue belting with the, with the um, gold flecking in as well to give him the tricolour coloration. The setters were, became very popular in the 19th century because they could work at a distance from the guns. They were very stylish. The lashing tail action of the setters, one of the hallmarks of the breed. And they were popular largely with the gentry and the nobility. They're very stylish to watch working on the moors. And setters have a very particular way of working, don't they? They're real bird dogs out on the moors. They, they're called setters because when they scent game, they freeze or set and locate the, the game, and then the guns can come in and uh, dispatch them. 
And you're quite right, I totally miss those orange spots. Tricolour ears. And, and here's the German long haired pointer. This is the largest of the um, German pointers and developed it again to do all the work a gun duck man would need hunting, pointing, and retrieving. It comes from a mixture of um, setter breeds and spaniel breeds and the, the German hunting dogs. They're not very numerous in the uh, English show ring, but they're very popular in field trials and they, with the, uh, the hunters. This one is solid brown. German long hair pointers were previously found here in Great Britain way back in the 1890s, but then they disappeared from our shores and have been reintroduced in the 1990s, recognized by the Kennel Club in 1997. So a relative newcomer to the group ring here at Crufts and delightful to see them. Yes, and although this one's a solid brown, they also come in brown roan and a color called trout, trout roan, which is a bit romantically named. <laughs> <laughs> A powerful hunter, this, the German long haired pointer. And now we see the German short haired pointer. This is the German short haired pointer, and really, I think since the Second World War, we've seen quite an influx of continental breeds. I don't think any have been as popular with the shooters and gun dog people as the German short haired pointer. Such a brilliant all purpose dog, this. Fantastic in the field holds a point, will work on its own with its, with its um, handler as a hunter, pointer, retriever, a dog that can do all the jobs that are required of it in the field. It can find the game, it can point it, and it can retrieve it once it's been shot. There's something wonderfully unexaggerated and functional about the German shorthead pointer. Absolutely fit for function, good shoulders to give it good reach. A harsh weatherproof coat, good scenting powers from large nostrils, short backed and beautifully balanced. And this one is going very well here. Despite being a veteran, Morgan's seven years old and is a show champion both here and in the Netherlands, too. And this is a breed which needs a lot of work to keep it interested. It's very active. And now we've got the German wire-haired pointer. We've just seen the short head. That the wire is not just an identical breed with a wire coat, but quite different. And it was developed by introducing some wire-haired hunting dogs in. The Germans have always been interested in the wire-coated breeds. And this one has a double wire coat. Slightly heavier and longer, but um, they can certainly work in all environments, in, in thick undergrowth. It gives, gives them protection. And Esme's just 17 months old, this young bitch. She lives with Sharon Pinkerton, famous Bar Eve kennel, but was imported from Holland, so bringing some new bloodlines in there. Very characteristic face with that beard and moustache. These dogs should be powerful all through with that weatherproof coat that's wire-haired but shouldn't be too profuse. The stylish lines of the heaviest and tallest of the setter breeds, the Gordon setter, characterized by that wonderful black and tan coat, in gleaming condition, this one. One of our native vulnerable breeds, but nonetheless popular in the show ring. Hails from the estates of the Duke of Gordon, which is where he draws his name. This is the heaviest of the pointer breed. He's got, of the uh, set of breeds, he's got flat bladed bone, heavy bone. The standard says made like a weight carrying hunter. Now that, that's a bit of a um, outdated description now, but a weight carrying hunter used to be short back, deep in the body for uh, stamina and lung room. Although they're black and tan, the, the early Gordon setters did have some other colors in them, but they were selectively bred now to be only in the black and tan, a hallmark of the breed. Such a beautiful, noble head on this breed. 
framed by those long feathered ears. And there should be plenty of feathering there, but not so much as it would prevent the dog from doing its work. And the lashing tail action, again, a hallmark of the set of breeds. Suzanne Harris was the Hungarian Vizsla judge today. The Hungarian Vizsla now forward. This is a native of Hungary, but it was thought that it was brought to Hungary from further east. However, the breed during the, the two world wars was almost wiped out and um, the resurgence of it came after the world war with um, the stock of um, emigrants from Hungary. They're a moderately built breed, moderate bone, beautiful russet gold color is the only color we see in this breed. And Hugo's four years old. A mature dog just coming to his best. There's quite slow maturing these some of these gun dog breeds. As Frank says, that russet coat completely characteristic, and they're quite popular in the show ring, aren't they? They're Racy lines, but great balance in the breed. They've won a, had a best in show winner at Crofts a few years ago, and he's been a great sire. The other interesting thing about this coat, it's uh, supple and pliant, slightly greasy to the touch. The Hungarian Vizsla. Gaunt and noble. This is Foxy, the three-year-old Hungarian wirehead Vizsla and a show champion to boot. This is a truly handsome hunt point and retrieve breed with the same lovely russet color as the Vizsla, but of course the distinctive wire coat. Another one that's arrived more recently in our show rings here, but is really gaining popularity. You can see the substance there, slightly heavier than the Hungarian Vizsla, but nonetheless equally balanced and an equally good worker. Again, a little stronger than the Hungarian visitor in bone and in head, but again, they should be functional. Movement and balance, very important in all of the working breeds. And another hunter pointer retriever, this one, a dog that can do everything. A real right-hand man in the shooting field. The Hungarian wirehead Vizsla. Now here we have the Irish red and white setter. This was is, is Alanea Summer Cottage. She was the top winner in the breed last year. C came to fame just as a junior and has had a wonderful career. The Irish red and white setter bears the same stock route as the Irish setter, which is much more popular. Uh, during, they go back to the same bloodlines, but during the World Wars, this was almost wiped out. Only a couple of breeders in Ireland, one in the UK. The coat is so distinctive in this breed, isn't it? The white almost has a pearlescence to it against that beautiful, rich, bright red colour. Clear white background and uh, islands of uh, this chestnut red. But they. They are rather different in type. They're shorter in the leg. They're athletic rather than racy, so they're a little more heavy, heavier boned than the Irish setter, not as racy. And they have the most delightful temperaments, Irish red and white setters. Hard to understand why they should be one of our vulnerable breeds. They're friendly and affectionate in nature, which makes them a great household dog as well as a great worker. The Irish red and white setter. Now the Irish setter, the racy lines and that beautiful red coat, so instantly recognisable. Also probably one of the most popular gun dogs on the sofa at home with those of you watching. Often known as the red setter, it's actually the Irish setter is the correct name. This one, a lovely looking dog in full coat. That The chestnut coat and lovely feathering is a, a very glamorous for the breed. Those raised eyebrows, almond-shaped eyes, beautiful, clean, quality head. It's quite a long head, isn't it, and should be carried proudly on that wonderful long neck. The word racy defines the breed. They're built on long, flowing lines. Beautiful top line, slightly sloping from the withers. And a great mover, this one, showing every bit of the devil-may-care attitude so popular in this breed. They're real clowns. 
The Irish setter. And there's the distinctive top line of the Italian Spinoni, a, a breed which has gained popularity. Again, he comes from Italy where he was an all-purpose gun dog, largely a duck retriever working on the marshes. He's solidly built, thick, pliant skin, and large spongy nose and nostrils for scenting power. A heavy-boned hunter pointer retriever, this one, the Italian Spinoni, but that soft, gentle, almost human expression is very, very highly valued. They have the most beautiful temperaments. And a distinctive top line, which just dips behind the withers, then rises to the loin before it falls again. A thick, leathery skin and a harsh, protective coat. And that long, loping stride, <laughs> when we're not having a little gamble, is very characteristic of the breed, the Spinoni trot, and they should be able to go all day. It's called a pounding trot, which tells you something of the substance of the breed. Newest to this group, the little Legotto Romagnolo. This one's come all the way from the Netherlands to compete. They came originally from the expansive marshes of the Romaine district of Italy and are used as a duck retriever, so a dog that's used to working in water, hence that wonderful weatherproof curly coat. The word legotto means curly-coated duck retriever, and that's what he was originally bred from. However, the marshes in the Romagna district have dried up, and now he's used as a truffle hunter, which, uh, um, which is perhaps a little bit more lucrative than uh, bringing back <laughs> ducks, I think. But still requires the same fantastic yeah, scenting ability, that scenting lovely powers. big nose. A very welcome addition to the Gundog group, this one. The large Munsterlander. From the region of Munster, he was developed from retrievers and spaniel breeds and a little bit of setter. And he comes only in this color, this black head, sometimes with a white snip or star on it. Um, All-purpose retriever, very popular with the uh, hunters and in field trials. And that coat's long and dense to the touch. A good deal of feathering on the legs and, of course, under the belly and the tail. And a fair amount of hair between those toes, too. Yes, they're um, all weather dogs, can go in any sort of um, terrain. Great workers. And, of course, hair on the toes means they can bring a great deal of the outdoors indoors, too, whether and, you want it or and not. In Germany, there is a Kleinmunsterland, which is the smaller version of this breed, which we don't have here, and that comes also in liver. This one, extremely stylish, good, firm top line, slightly sloping to the uh, tail set, and the tail carried with uh, happiness. I love the fact that his handler has chosen a dress that matches the dog. Very intelligent, the large Munsterlander, too. They do very well in obedience competitions, too. The graceful, curvaceous lines of the pointer. I watched this dog win best of breed today, and goodness me, did a roar go up. Originating from Spain, They've been so developed in this country on the grouse moors, particularly up in the north. They should be able to cover ground, hold a point, and the whole design of that head is in order to help them scent on the wind. The pointer should be a series of graceful curves. It should look like an athletic thoroughbred and have that look of quality about it. This one in orange and white. Um, he, he beat for best of breed today, the breed record holder. Um, sadly, he's not going with quite the same panache here in the big ring, but it should have a clean, easy-going stride, that bee sting tail, moderate length, thick at the base, tapered to the end.
should lash on the move. He's just a little bit um, overawed here, I think. Here is the heaviest of the retrievers, the Chesapeake Bay Retriever, coming from the icy waters of Chesapeake Bay, where he was bred to be a duck hunter, but also could guard the cabins at night. So he's got a lot of substance and a very protective coat, which equipped him to do his work. It's thought that the Newfoundland played a part in his um, ancestry. It gives him the substance and the water-going qualities and that protective coat. That weatherproof protective coat is because this is very much the water dog. Originally bred to help with duck hunting, he can stand any amount of coldness. And when you run your hands over that coat, they'll come away slightly oily. And it's the oiliness of the coat that protects him against the weather and the water. Strongly boned and a distinctive top line. The, the withers and the hindquarters almost level. They may have a slight dip between them. And there we have the Chesapeake Bay Retriever, the first of our retriever breeds. And this is the second, the curly-coated retriever. You could never mistake this dog. Distinctive head and covered in those crisp, tight curls over the whole dog, all the way down to the tip of his tail, apart from his head, which is nice and smooth-coated. Around 200 years old, this breed evolved from crosses of water spaniels and various retrievers. This is the tallest of the retrievers and perhaps the oldest. The headpiece is quite unique. It's a beautifully molded head. Not a lot of stop, but lots of chiseling, dark eyes. This one a liver, so it'll have um, darkish brown eyes. Very stylish, lots of substance. Two and a half years old, that's Teddy, and he came all the way from Finland to compete here. And here, the flat-coated retriever, one of the retriever family, and noted for his um, happiness. This one a big winner. He's been reserve best in show at Crufts last year. Now, the most numerically popular of all the gun dogs, this is the Golden Retriever. Three-year-old Song beat over 500 other Goldens to win here today at Crufts. And, of course, an immensely, immensely popular pet at home as well. The, the Golden Retriever was developed at Goosegen House in Scotland by Lord Tweedsmouth, and uh, the breed club still go there for a show to commemorate the foundation of the breed. The, um, the Golden Retriever comes from what was called the Yellow Retriever, long popular in Scotland and the Scottish borders, and now hugely popular all around the world. It comes in any shade of gold or cream. And, of course, an immensely intelligent breed, which means you'll see Golden Retrievers performing all sorts of other tasks apart from gun dog work. Most notably, they make wonderful guide dogs, explosive detecting dogs and assistance dogs. True family pets, too, with a wonderful open-hearted temperament. Two judges today and over 500 here. One judge for dogs, one for bitches, and this is the winner. The Golden Retriever. and the Labrador Retriever. Again, 500 of them are here today. The Labrador Retriever, the most popular breed in the United Kingdom. They come from North America, and again, were bred as retrievers. They may have Newfoundland in them again, which gives them the substance, the big barrel ribs, and weatherproof double coat. And of course, this is a yellow Labrador, not a golden Labrador, is so often incorrectly said. This is Sadie, two years old, 
came from Doncaster to compete today. And a big winner in the breed last year. Interestingly, the, uh, the Labrador was brought back from um, America in the late 19th century. The first breed club was formed in 1916. And of course, they've gone on to great heights in uh, the field. It was the field trial work which first brought them into prominence, but now hugely popular family companions, the thick otter tail. You can see the double coat texture there. And a lovely move of this one too. Now the smallest of our retriever breeds, this one all the way from Italy to compete across, this is the Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever. A clown of a retriever that was more of a, a distraction dog than anything else, intended to run up and down on the shore and distract the ducks whilst they were dealt with by the hunters. A distinctive coat and they should have the white markings on that beautiful russet colour. A decoy dog, as you say, Jessica, where they were uh, sent out to retrieve sticks from behind screens and it said that the activity of them with their wagging tail, a high set tail, attracted the ducks within range of the guns. So a uh, bit of a decoy dog. They have to have webbed feet, which helps them in working. Very athletic, love water. Um, I think the handler here wins the prize for the most extraordinary shoes to appear in the Crufts Group 2016. All the way from Italy, the Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retriever. The American Cocker Spaniel on the table now. They were developed from the Cocker Spaniel and go back to the same root blood. The, the dog Obo II was sent to America. He was a, an English Cocker. The Americans developed them on different lines and they've got this shorter foreface, a more dome skull and this thick luxuriant coat and a sloping top line. They are the differences. They weren't recognized as a separate breed until 1948. And of course this was your breed, wasn't it Frank? You bred American Cotton yeah, Spaniels so for many years. For 30 years and my, my last one died just uh, before New Year this year. So they're a marvelous breed wonderfully affectionate there's a lot of grooming goes in to get a coat like that but here's the distinctive sloping top line and high set tail a tail carriage above the back like that is a real no-no in the other spaniel breeds it's allowed in the american cocker and although they have a profuse coat for the show ring this is still very much the working dog underneath yes, there. They've, they've got still got the sporting instinct and we've got a couple of full champions in the breed Cut off the coat and they can still work. They've still got the working instinct. From one of the smaller to the heaviest of the Spaniels, this, the Clumber Spaniel. Dex has come all the way from Croatia to compete at Crufts. They were developed, of course, originally in Clumber Park in Nottinghamshire, more than 200 years ago when they came over from France originally. That distinctive coloration, the heavy set, heavy bone, lots of feathering, and that massive head with a big, strong muzzle. Nonetheless, they should not be overdone. This is very much the working gun dog. Yes, they're a relatively long bodied dog, low to the ground, which gives them a slight rolling action, strongly boned. This is a best of breed winner at Crufts in previous years and comes from a remarkable kennel. The, the white coat and lemon markings are the desired and uh, favoured colour. There's sometimes a darker orange marking. And a strong competitor, the Clumber Spaniel. And here, here's the Cocker Spaniel. And of course, the, the Cocker Spaniel gets his name from early days when he was used on Woodcock. All of the Spaniel breeds share the same root blood. And only in the, with the formation of the Kennel Club in 1873 or so did they separate the breeds. All of the Spaniels were bred together and differentiated only by color and size and sometimes the territory where they were developed. A 
And you can just imagine those original little cocking spaniels, as they were called, rushing around in the undergrowth, flushing woodcock. They, they're characteristically merry, aren't they, they? That little tail should never stop. Compact and merry. They should be short-backed, big ribs. This one, a blue roan. Um, two judges today, and the two judges couldn't agree, so a referee was called in, and this bitch, um, who's a big winner from early days, got the decision. A busy little dog on the move, but nonetheless should be powerful in action. They're very easy to train, desperately want to please their owners, and generally great fun to have around the yes, home. Yes, it's said that the cocker should have the face of a lady in the backside of a parlour maid. That's a powerful hindquarters. <laughs> What a wonderful description, the little cocker spaniel. This is an English Springer Spaniel. This one's 17 months old, messy, and has come from Denmark to compete at Crufts. Springers derive from the use of the spaniel to startle the bird out of the undergrowth so that they spring upwards and can then be shot by the guns. This should be a balanced, medium-sized spaniel, beautiful in the head, and again carrying the feathering that we expect of our spaniels, but not to the extent that they can't do a decent job of work. This is the highest on the leg of the spaniel breed, which means this has a good length of leg and gives it that scopiness on the move, a long, swinging stride. They, they were called springers also because before gun, guns were invented, they used to spring forward and force the uh, b birds into nets. Later on, of course, they did the same when the gu guns came. This one coming from a famous kennel in Denmark, the Seegers Kennel, just a little bit overawed, looking round and not using its tail as it should here. Yes, he does. He's a young dog, and I think perhaps it's a little bit overwhelming here. The English Springer Spaniel. And here's the field spaniel, one of the most ancient of the spaniel breeds, almost extinct um, after the First World War, and they needed a, a cross with a Springer Spaniel to keep the breed going. Uh, fortunately, uh, although they're still vulnerable native breed, there's a greater population of them now. The head of the field spaniel is very characteristic, isn't it? Long and lean with that beautiful long foreface. And they want lovely chiseling under the eyes and a lovely almond-shaped eye, dark brown to give it a soft, melting expression. He makes a very good companion for the country The slightly longer in the body. And uh, another one that looks a little bit overawed by the atmosphere in the group ring tonight. We should have a slow, dignified, long stride one of the hallmarks of their carriage of the breed. Not very happy there. The field spaniel. The tallest of the spaniels, this is the Irish water, instantly characterized by that curly coat that covers the whole body apart from the foreface and the tail. The Irish water is something of an enigma. Shown as a spaniel, but he works in the field trials almost as a retriever. Attracted attention in the show classes way back in 1862. And although though a vulnerable breed now, still has popularity as a worker. It's thought that the poodle plays a part in the ancestry of the Irish Water Spaniel, and we see that in the head shape, this good length of head, almond-shaped eyes, and this long, fine forefist. There should be a look of quality about the head. And underneath the coat, big barrel ribs, and a tail which is a bit like a rat. Two inches of hair at the top, and then uh, hairless uh, without the furnishings. And they're great clowns, Irish Water Spaniels, quite difficult to keep control of. They, they certainly <laughs> are. This one beautifully presented in great coat. Big winner last year, full of quality. 
This is the lowest to ground of the Spaniards, the Sussex Spaniel. Developed as his name suggests in Sussex, and it said that his coat is the colour of Sussex clay and uh, the heavy, heavy clay of Sussex. And he was bred to go into thick undergrowth in heavy condition. And he's Beautiful golden liver with golden tips to the coat characterized the breed. This strong head, strong muzzle, lovely eyes. The, the coat has the texture of seal skin, this wonderful, flexible, soft quality to it. A real purposeful dog on the move. The, the head characterizes the Sussex and this wonderful heavy bone. They're really strong dogs. I'm very pleased to see this one here. It won its first big championship win under myself, and he's gone on to great things. Top dog in the breed last year. That's Rigby, seven years old now, so a veteran, and nonetheless putting in a very good performance in the group here at Crufts 2016, the Sussex Spaniel. This Welsh Springer Spaniel, Jason, is five years old. He's a Swedish champion, but has come to compete from the USA. There's obviously a real family likeness between the Welsh Springer and the Springer Spaniel, but subtle differences, and particularly this gorgeous red and white coat color, separate the two. And the Welshman, another one that's done really well here at Crufts in the past. And a remarkable win here, for, because this dog came from America, where he was best to breed at the Westminster Show last month. So that's a wonderful double to pull off the two biggest shows, or the two most prestigious shows, within a month. The Irish red and white, just slightly smaller than the, the Welsh Springer Spaniel, slightly smaller than the English Springer, only coming in this one colour, a slight rise over the loin, to its low set tail. And finer than a Springer, aren't they? Slightly finer mm. in bone, more refined in head. The Welsh Springer Spaniel. And here's the Spanish Water Dog, relatively new to the breed in the show ring, only a few years here, but uh, becoming very popular. He was developed in Spain, not only as a water gun dog but also as a sheep herder and it's still used very much there it's thought that some of the mediterranean breeds and the legato were used this is a multi-purpose dog many functions he works as a water dog but will also turn his hand to herding sheep and that thick coat it's clipped every six months, so uh, it's not barbed, it shouldn't be trimmed or shaped. It should be a rustic looking dog. He has a short back and sides once every six months when he looks quite different but can still be shown in his short coat. The Spanish water dog. We travel from Spain to Germany. The grey ghost, this tall and rangy, but a hunter pointer retriever of great stamina and substance, the Weimarana. They take their name from the German court of Weimar, where they found much favour. And there's actually a Van Dyke painting of a dog that looks just like a Weimarana, dated back to the 1600s. So a dog with a great history behind it. They're known as the grey ghost dogs because they're silver grey colour, and this is the correct colour for the breed. They've got lighter shades in the eye to give it this sort of gaunt expression. And this is six-year-old Ice. Top dog in the breed for last year, a group winner himself and a best-in-show winner, so he's got good form coming in here. And I think handled by Patsy Hollings, who's his breeder although he's owned by Karen Whitehead. Should have a good length of body, a long top line, good substance in the ribcage. 
and this pliant coat. So the last of our gun dogs, hunter pointer retriever, the Weimarana. So Di Arrowsmith taking a final look at her gun dog best of breed winners. Who will she choose to be our third group winner? Di reminding herself of the quality of these gun dog best of breed winners that she's got here, walking down the line, taking a measured look at them all. And, and I think this has been the strongest group we've seen so far, Jessica. A lot of top oh, quality dogs here. So I think she's going to have a tough decision to get them down to a shortlist here. Little Legato, frantically wagging tail. There's the flat coat from last year who won the group. Super outline of the golden retriever there and the Labrador. <laughs> Nova Scotia's getting bored. Lovely to see so many wagging tails. Uh, this is the this is the moment when a judge has to be reminding herself, thinking about which one she wants in her shortlist. It's hard to discard beautiful dogs, but this is the time you have to do it. Yes, hard we'll probably choice. see her pick them down to maybe eight. Spoiled for choice, I think. So a nice round of applause for all these, because of course, every one of them is a best of breed winner. In comes the English setter. And the first of the shortlisted dogs is the English setter. The German wirehead pointer and the Gordon setter come forward. The Irish setter's called in. The, the Legotto's come, a very popular decision there. Super little dog. Chesapeake Bay Retriever. The flat-coated retriever, great cheers for that one. The Sussex Spaniels brought forward of the Spaniel family. And is that the final? And she has eight, eight in the shortlist there. And what a super shortlist that is. All the other best of breed winners congratulated as they leave the ring. And now Diara Smith is going to move these again. The first of them, the English setter. This is Frankie, three and a half years old. Rishekha, shades of grey. Top winner in the breed last year. She's just checking now on their movement, this um, cleanness of movement, this power from the hops which drives them on, and this clean parallel stride in front. And in the last year of showing, Group 3 at Bath, Group 4 at Birmingham, Group 3 at Manchester. Can Frankie do one better and get a place at the Crofts Gun Dog Group? And she's sending them round the ring to look at profile movement, looking at the top line. The firm top line is a great indicator of balance between the forehand and the rear of the dog. Lovely performance from the English setter. Now we see that German wirehead pointer, just 17 months old, Esme. Imported from Holland. Again, a very clean mover, wonderful coat on it. You can see the double texture protective coat on that. Very nice balance and proportions. Joint top puppy in the breed for 2015. First challenge certificate and best of breed as a puppy. Second challenge certificate today, so they'll now be chasing that all-important third to make a champion. And, and here's the dog that's already had success in the big ring tonight. He won the classes for vulnerable native breeds, this Gordon Setter. A big winner, a group winner, coming down. The handler from Scotland, very and in experienced. 2015, best of breed at Crufts last year, best in show at the Scottish breeds and the Gun Dog Breeds Championship shows in 2015. A multiple group winner, the Gordon Setter, now the Irish Setter. This is Noodle, six years old, 
champion Fendara Pop Noodle. And a wonderful top line, the racy outline of the breed. Beautiful head qualities, in glorious condition, and this lushing tail. He's not put a foot wrong tonight and looks really good. He does, and you need that X factor if you're going to get a win or a place in the group at Crufts, don't you? In competition like this, certainly. Uh, here's the little the duck retriever, now a truffle finder. And they're a great character breed, that's why he's got all the crowd going. The wonderful character and style. and glorious faces this is a small dog but if you watch that dog go look how far in front of the dog those front legs go and behind the dog those back legs go there's tremendous what we call extension and drive that dog is moving superbly and now the substance and the double coat of the Chesapeake Bay Retriever lovely dog you can see the texture of coat the powerful hind quarters driving along there this strong bone a gentle giant, this one, and an absolutely brilliant worker. And there we see the top line with the, the uh, slight dip in the middle. Typical of the breed. That's Yogi, three years old, and here we have the flat-coated retriever. Castle Rock, Simply Magic. Now, can this flat coat pull it off for a second year? He's a great show dog, a wonderful specimen of the breed. All the way from Sweden, of course, reserve best in show last year. Can he manage to take the group again and give himself a second chance? Top dog in his breed in Sweden and Norway. And here's the, uh, the stoic expression and movement of the Sussex Spaniel. Beast of Bodmin, but he's no beast. It was a lovely Sussex Spaniel, lovely bone, excellent colour and top line. Again, the handler taking at just the right pace for a short-legged breed. It's very important that they keep their balance on the move. Wonderful, unruffled performance from Rigby. Seven years old, he's a veteran, but nonetheless looking in the peak of condition this evening in the group ring. Quite unfazed by the big ring here. That's marvellous performance. Now a tough decision awaits Di Arrowsmith. So there's the boards coming out. She has to decide which one is closest to perfection for its breed and also which one has put up the performance to snatch this group. Well, I don't think there's a single one of that final eight who's not put in a decent performance. Yes, it's going to be a tough decision. The winner of the Gundog Group, Crufts 2016. Here we go. It's the Gordon Setter. The Go topping the vulnerable breeds earlier on this evening and now topping the Gundog group for Crufts 2016. What a spectacular win for show champion Lord Ace Fulcrum Junior Warren, four and a half years old. In second place, it's the Chesapeake Bay Retriever. A wonderful win for the breed. Marvellous. Quality not to be denied tonight, even in one of the less well-known breeds. Oh, and the little Legotto Romagnolo takes third. Superb. It's the flat-coated retriever gets fourth place this year. She'll be happy with that. That is such an achievement to, to win at this level at Crufts two years in a row, sustained quality, but our winner is undeniable. It's the Gordon Setter who takes the Crufts Gundog Group for 2016. Presentation of the trophy now. Lovely, noble head to this dog. Presentations now going down the line to second place in the group to that lovely Chesapeake Bay Retriever. Trophies presented by Alan Roundtree from the Field Trial Committee. And rosettes presented by Di Arrowsmith, our judge for tonight.
how do you? Yeah, I think it's a pretty So you're from five. Will you be going home in your preparation, or? <laughs> we, um, we'll, we'll stop off part way up. My partner lives in Yorkshire, so we'll stop there, and we'll come back on Sunday. Brilliant. We'll down by there. And how are you going to prepare for Sunday now, when you sober up? <laughs> um, I'll probably have a lot of lying down. <laughs> um, but yeah, lots to do before Sunday. He'll be bath and groomed again as well, so he'll be clean after he's probably had a run on a moor somewhere tomorrow. Congratulations once again. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the Gundog Group winner, the Gordon Setter. Round it Can I ask you to do your level of honour? So we see a lap of honour now from our four Gundog Group winners, crowning them all the Gordon Setter. And the third of our finalists for Sunday night's Crufts Best in Show 2016. A great winner, Frank. Yeah, a wonderful dog. He's a, had a great night. Two big wins in this big ring. So we'll see that one coming back on Sunday evening to compete for Best in Show.